Hey there guys, I'm Will and welcome to FP1 and today we've got another car launch, the first of I think three today actually uh, in the Mercedes Formula 1 team. Obviously we got the livery earlier in the week, now we have the actual car itself and yeah I can start to talk about the new features they've added into this design. So the overall support on the videos on the channel at the moment has been fantastic and thank you so much for that, it's honestly been surreal to see everything and all the comments and all the views as well in the last few videos. I'll leave all of my other analysis videos on the last few car launches down in, in the description below and also in the comments so if you want to check those out feel free. So let's just start with with the livery. Obviously that got announced back on I think it was Monday or Tuesday. Now I didn't really make a video on it. I thought I'd wait till the full car was revealed. <sighs> my honest thoughts on it, I, I don't know. Now I've seen it on track, I like it a little bit more. Though I just, I kind of feel like there should have been a bit more red. Either no red at all, or a lot more red on the car. And obviously they can't go full on Ferrari, that's not what I mean. But I just kind of feel like the places where they've put the red, it doesn't really work. And it kind of clashes a little bit too much with that Patronus kind of turquoise, greeny blue colour that they have going on as well. So, I don't know, maybe it'll grow on me throughout the season. Though it's had been quite a divisive delivery. A lot of people happy with it, a lot of people not so sure. So, we'll see how things go. But, uh... Yeah, let's get let's get on to the actual important stuff though and looking at the actual aerodynamics. There's been a few things changed here. I do feel like this is maybe the biggest example of a launch spec car that we've seen so far though. Lots of things that I feel like, uh, well, I mean Mercedes, even thinking back last year, in the second week of testing, they basically brought a different car. So I think a lot of things I say today will be, really, I mean, useless in a few weeks time, but that remains to be seen. Let's get straight into it. So the first thing to note, and actually a really, really important thing, is looking at the front wing. And thinking back to last year, uh, Mercedes were a very keen advocate and stayed with this high uh, top element design. So what I mean by that uh, is if you look at the top element of the front wing, back last year, if you go back to the photos of last year's car, you'll see that it attached to the end plate very, very high up. Now, teams like Ferrari did the complete opposite of that. Alfa Romeo and I think Toro Rosso were other teams that went for this other approach uh, and they went really, really low. And that the whole point of that was to try and push air onto the outside face of the tyre and create that outwash, which the 2019 regulations kind of aimed to get rid of in the first place. So Mercedes obviously stuck to the high design throughout the majority of 2019. Maybe they lowered them a little bit, but the, they couldn't really go to the low design as it wouldn't have really worked with the aerodynamics further back on the car. It would have required the complete redesign. Uh, this year, though, they have gone for a lower design. This is quite key for one main reason, and that's that Ferrari came out, I think, either towards the end of last year or just after the last race in Abu Dhabi, and basically said their aerodynamic approach was the wrong way. Now, we've seen through a lot of the cars this year in Ferrari as well, they've kept that low design. So I wonder if that was just trying to throw other teams off the scent. It was a bit of a weird article thinking back. I'm going to try and find it again. I think it was an autosport, uh, but they were basically saying that they went the wrong way with their aerodynamics. So... It's, it seems a little bit weird to me that these teams have continued with the low design. Again, maybe it was just Ferrari trying to pull the wool over people's eyes and try to get people to go the other way. <laughs> I've never really seen those sort of tactics in Formula 1, not not at least like that. But, uh, hey, I mean, Mercedes have gone for it. So, obviously, their simulations have thrown up some sort of improvements by using this low design. And I imagine the rest of the car will have been redesigned to count for that now. Now they've had the time to actually look into this concept a little bit more and see how things go. Uh, also, thing, one thing to note on the front wing is looking at the end plates themselves, it's very, very aggressively curved, uh, especially towards the end. Again, that's to push air around the outside face of the tyre and just get it outboard of the car and so it's not affect none of that dirty air is affecting the aerodynamics further back. Now, this I think is the most aggressive um, curvature I've seen on any of the end plates so far. Just I think maybe it's just the angles that are putting this off perhaps slightly, but it's, uh, yeah, very, very aggressive concept. They have made a lot of changes to the front wing. Uh, and one final thing to note, I'm not 100% sure on this one, uh, but if you look at the actual nose cone itself, I think the geometry of that has been changed slightly. I think it was the second week of testing when they brought that uh, B-spec car last year. We saw this almost notch in the front, uh, in the front nose of the car. Uh, I feel like that notch has been pushed slightly further back this year. That might just be... Uh, the angles that I'm looking at or my memory being a little bit faulty, I'm not sure, not too sure. But it kind of looks like that front nose has been reprofiled very, very slightly. Again, probably with some aerodynamic benefits in mind. Uh, now, the scoop design that we have underneath the car, uh, kind of directing air down towards the floor, that has stayed the same. I think they introduced that in 2017. And it's gone through 
gradual redesigns over the years. That's still there and has been working very, very well for them. We all can also can see an S ducts just before the 77 in this image that I'm seeing at the moment. Uh, so if you look at where the two almost uh, L-shaped fins pop up, there's a little line in between that. So that is the S-duct, and I've explained it in the other videos, but I'll explain it again. Uh, basically, it's like this S-shaped tube through the nose cone that takes air from underneath the car and spits it out just in front of the uh, cockpit. Basically, there's nice uh, f uh, smooth air over the cockpit of the car and over the uh, top of the car and towards the rear of the uh, bodywork as well, and just uh, make that... Uh, make, make it so that when it's hitting those aerodynamic components, you've not got any turbulent air that's going to uh, decrease performance in any way, shape, or form. So Mercedes barge balls to me, I feel like, I don't know, I, I feel like they're very, very similar to last year. From at least, from looking at the images that I'm seeing at the moment, I feel like this is going to be an area that's been changed, that's going to be changed quite a lot, possibly even by the first week in testing. Uh, I mean, just, just looking at it as well, I, it, it almost seems out of place. And this is what I mean when I say I feel this is very much a launch spec car. And the renders that we've seen at the moment aren't really giving us anything. And in fact, actually, I've, I've just seen an image, literally just this second of the car on track. Uh, and it does look even different in that image now in their shakedown runs that are doing pretty much as I speak at the moment. Uh, the overall uh, engine intakes on the sides, the side pod intakes, they seem to have been reprofiled a little bit. They look a little bit smaller than last year. I think that must say it's a little bit tight, uh, a bit more tightly packaged, which obviously we've seen teams gradually going through over the last sort of half decade. Uh, basically, just it's 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 going to improve the aerodynamic components, the uh, or the aerodynamic performance of the car. The only downside is it does kind of put limitations on re engine reliability and heating. I guess as these uh, turbo hybrid engines get more and more reliable, that's less of an issue. Uh, and Mercedes Inverse has probably been the most reliable engine at all since they came into the sport in 2014, these are turbo hybrid uh, engines. So it makes sense that the cars are getting tight, more tightly packaged as the years go on and as the engine reliability gets better. Uh, the overall top airbox seems to be very similar from last year. From what I remember, there's almost not been changed at all. I'm sure there might be some little detail in there, maybe uh, the geometry of the uh, sort of uh, slot. So it's been split into three kind of sections. Maybe that's changed a little bit, but it looks very, very similar to me. Uh, it's, yeah, it's just those side pod intakes look a lot smaller uh, and kind of come out a uh, not quite as far uh, across the floor as they used to last year. So the floor, again, it just, oh, I think I kind of had this with the uh, McLaren launch as well. It looks pretty, I don't want to say basic, uh, but I'm going to use the word underdeveloped. And again, I think this is something that we're going to see change radically over the course of testing and then into uh, the first race in Melbourne as well. Uh, it's a little bit more um, complicated than the McLaren one we saw yesterday, but nowhere near kind of things that Red Bull were bringing out a couple of days back and... That's the kind of thing I'm more expecting to see by the time we uh, hit the track properly in uh, in Australia. So again, I don't want to comment too much on this floor because I feel like it's going to change quite a lot. We have got a few slot gaps going towards the rear tyre just to push air down towards into the diffuser and make that more reliable. But yeah, I can see this floor changing quite a bit. Uh, final thing to note on then is the rear wing. And one thing I noticed quite late on actually... Uh, is they have changed it a little bit on the end plate size of things. I was looking at it initially and thinking they've literally just copied last year's, but I can see if you look just past where the actual wing elements there um, are themselves, it's almost like this three-step design, which I've not seen any uh, any actual car before, which is quite interesting. So this is just to help air bleed out as you get uh, past the elements uh, of the uh, rear wing. Again, just aiming to reduce drag from that rear wing and uh, obviously increase performance as a result of that. So an interesting design from Mercedes there. I don't believe any team on the grid have copied that just yet. So uh, we'll see if that works. We'll see if it continues through testing and maybe even if any other teams decide to pick that concept up. But that was just my thoughts then on the Mercedes car. What were yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Stay tuned on the channel as well as Alfa Romeo have announced or they've released some images of their car on the shakedown runs as well. Uh, I'm going to be covering that in a video later today. So keep it on the channel for that one. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and of course subscribe as well. And I will see you guys in the next one.